page 94 if you want to grab a songbook, join in with us, and let's stand. Now, I, I would ask that you all tonight, um, I, I think I can go out on a limb and say that we're, um, we're cautious, we're, uh, when it comes to gathering together, Right, I, I would agree that we're 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 saying that COVID is real, right? It's 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 not a fake thing. It's 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 evident. It's here. Uh, not saying it's here in this place, but you've chose to come to the house of God. Is that correct? Well, if you're going to come to the house of God, I believe in fellowship. Amen. I do that. I, I believe that with all my heart, and I understand that some people are still uncomfortable. But I'm telling you, if you're not uncomfortable, you ought to go around and shake someone's hand. Tell them how much you're, it, listen, it does something for you. It does something for me anyways. And if you don't, just, just keep your hands together, I guess. I don't know, but listen, the Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. And I love good fellowship. Do you, don't you all? Yeah. Do you like it? Well, let's fellowship. Tell someone you love them tonight. Page 94. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. No. That is not, not, not like I'm in a new world. All right, tell someone you love them. Soul of mine, when God dips his love in my heart. 
Let's just slip right over there at Calvary. Amen. All right, let's get right into the service tonight. Don't know what's on your heart. I hope that uh, you come to worship the Lord tonight. Uh, I don't know who's going to sing, but if you have a song, we want you to sing it. If you have a testimony, we want you to stand and give it. Uh, not, as we say often, not a test of groany, but a testimony. Amen. God wants to hear from us. He wants to, uh, I think he wants to, uh, the Bible says he inhabits our praise. You know, he knows what's going on in our lives. The Bible says he knows our uprisings, our downsittings. He knows our thoughts far off. But what God wants to hear from us is how good he is. Amen. And I'll tell you what, isn't God great tonight? Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, I can't think of anything better this side of heaven than my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So tonight, who would like to stand and honor the Lord with a word of testimony? Good, Sister Barb. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Amen. Anybody else? Bless your heart, brother. Amen. Bless your heart, brother. Good to have you back with us tonight. 
girls are going to come. They're going to sing a song, and then I think when they're done, uh, I believe Sister Emma's going to come. She's going to sing a song. Amen. So be much in prayer for them, and if you have a testimony, stand up and give the Lord praise tonight. Amen. Great is the Lord. Hey, is he great? I, I don't think you all were hearing me tonight. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He's worthy tonight. Amen. So stand and honor him tonight as they sing. Chains turn on its ceiling, and you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way, rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus and let my Jesus change your life. Who can wipe away the tears from broken dreams? Until the past to disappear, oh, let me tell you about my Jesus and all the wrong turns that you would go and undo if you could. Who can work it all for your good? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way, rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about strong and his grace is free and the good news is i know that he can do for you what he's done for me let me tell you about my jesus and let my jesus change your life take my cross to Calvary, pray my price for all my guilty, who would care that much about me, let me tell you about my Jesus, oh, he makes a way where there ain't no way, rises up from an empty grave, ain't no sinner that he can't save, let me tell you about my Jesus, his love is strong and his grace is free, and the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me, let me tell you about my Jesus, and let my Jesus change your life.
Um, <laughs> so, as always, I was going back and forth if I should come up and sing, and then I know that was God's push to tell me I should, but um, this song I'm going to sing is actually um, a new one that I wrote, and <laughs> I haven't sang it anywhere yet because it's been too hard to, but um, it started off just after Pappy passed and everything, and I just, <laughs> all I kept saying is, God, I just don't understand I don't understand why this had to happen, why it had to be this way. And <laughs> then it was just like God just kept telling me I'm going to make it okay. I'm going to make you okay. And I, 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 I'm to a point where it's just hard because I was so on fire at the beginning of this year. And I was like, God, I'm not there right now. I feel like I can't be that witness that I was. I feel like I can't be, I'm not the strong one right now. And it was like God was like, you don't have to be. And... <laughs> even though that is so hard for me because I've always been the one to just say, just push through it, it's going to be fine. I'm thankful to say that my God says that I don't have to be the strong one and that in his due time, he's going to make that brokenness, make that uh, every single bad thing, every single struggle okay and make it be beautiful. This song's called Make the Broken Beautiful. <laughs>
thought as she was singing that um, scripture come to mind is when we are weak then are we made strong through Christ Jesus I'm telling you God has us exactly where he wants us when we feel like there's no hope when we stop relying on ourselves and everybody else around us the world but when we start trusting in him the Bible says that it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm telling you, if we could get a hold of the fact that our lives would be so much better if we would just seek God more consistently, more faithfully, our lives could be changed like we've never seen before. I'm thankful tonight I serve a God. Listen, I'm thankful that he's still in control. Do you hear me? He's still in control of everything. And God's will will be done. Amen. Amen. Anybody else tonight with a song or a testimony for the Lord? It's your heart, sissy. Amen. Bless your heart. Amen. I, I, what a wonderful testimony. Did you hear what she said? Did you hear Anna? She said, thank God for conviction. He that is without chastisement is a bastard and not a son hey when you don't feel the chastisement of God and the conviction of God then you better get concerned amen thank God anybody else man it's a good place to be tonight isn't it you glad you're here your heart amen amen praise the Lord amen bless your brother amen <laughs> bless your heart bless your heart brother Randy amen amen what a sweet spirit tonight somebody else don't mind me you all enjoy yourself amen Pull yourself right up to the master's table because it's good. Amen. Anybody else?
bless your heart here. Amen. 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 Go ahead, brother. your heart. Amen. Bless your heart. Amen. I hear a lot of brokenness, a lot of uh, humbleness, uh, a lot of God taking us to the place where we have no choice but surrender. Let me tell you, folks, that's where God wants us. That's where he wants us, Brother Butch. You remember when the disciples had followed Christ to the point, and they were following him because of the miracles. And he basically called them out because they were following him because of the miracles. And if he would stop doing the miracles, they would walk away. And the Bible says, I believe it's John 6, 66, that many of his disciples walked no more with him. I love this passage of scripture. And he looked Peter right in the eye and he said, will thou also go away? But I love Peter's response. He said, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. Can I tell you something, friend? We have nowhere else to turn but the Lord. That we have no place to look other than up. Because he's still king. He's still the Lord. He's still on his throne, and prayer changes things. It doesn't change God, but it changes things in our lives. It releases the power of God into our lives, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. Somebody else tonight. Come on up, sissy. You pray for Sister Heather. She comes. Listen, mind the Lord tonight. I'd love to preach, but if I don't have to and don't, God doesn't want me to, I won't. Amen. Let's mind the Lord. Let's honor him tonight. You pray for Sister Heather as she comes. The Father has a plan, though it's hard to see it now. You feel you're walking all alone, but he is there, no doubt. When the storm around you rages and you're tossed to and fro, when you're faced with life's decisions, not sure which way to go, stand still and let God move. Standing still is hard to do. When you feel you have reached the end, he'll make a way for you. Stand still and let God move. When the enemy surrounds you and the walls are closing in, when the tide is swiftly rising, and you wonder where he's been. Friend, there never was a moment that his arms weren't reaching out. You can rest assured and be secure. God is moving right now. Stand still and let God move. Standing still is hard to do. When you feel you have reached the end, he'll make a way for you. Stand still and let God move. When you feel you have reached the end, he'll make a way for you. Stand still and let God move. The answer will come but only in his time. Stand still and let God move. Stand still and let God move.
I just want to thank God for all that he's done for me and for all the blessings that I have for the two beautiful babies that he gave me. And you know, my husband might not be walking right now where he needs to be, but I know that God's going to bring him back. And I pray you guys will just pray for all of us. Anybody else tonight? All right, well, if you've got your Bibles, I want you to open them up. You pray for us this evening to the book of Colossians, chapter number 3. <clears throat> Colossians, chapter number 3. <laughs> Bless your heart, brother. Amen. your heart brother sure yeah buddy Bless your heart, brother. Amen. 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 Bless your heart. Amen. Anybody else? Y'all don't mind if I get comfortable, do you? Well, I'm going to anyways. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Colossians, chapter number 3. And if you're there, stand with us for the reading of the word of the Lord. I feel like someone's got their hands around my neck tonight. And uh, I pray that God would just set us at liberty because I believe this is a message that we all need to hear. And before I tell you what it's about, I want to read the scripture and I want you to meditate as we read Colossians chapter 3. Are you there? Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. The Bible says this, now notice, if. Notice how he starts chapter 3. If you, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear... Then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil constituents, and covetous, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, as we bow in your very presence tonight. God, our voices need your strength. God, I need your strength. I need your direction. Father, I'm asking for the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. God, as we proclaim your word, we know that your word is true. It's unfallible. It's unadulterated. 
God, it is pure. It is right. It is life. It's everything that we need to survive in this life. And God, for a few moments of time, we ask God that you would allow us to preach to your people. God, that we'd be an encouragement to them and we would help them. And God, I pray that when they leave here tonight, Lord, their spirits would be renewed. Their lives would be regenerated. God, I pray that they would walk out of here tonight knowing that, God, that you are going with them. And I pray tonight, God, that you'd use this preacher. Help us, God, tonight. We do pray. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. You may be seated. I want to ask you a question tonight. I want to start, I guess, the message with this question. And it's the title of the message. How do we make it? How do we make it? When the world in which we live in is turned upside down, most people want nothing to do with God. Families are in disarray. Drugs are, in, are at an all-time high. Teenage suicide, pregnancy, abortion, all of the above has skyrocketed. Depression has been infiltrated into the homes across our land. The churches, 30% have left never to return. How is it that we, God's people, make it? Can I tell you, when we got saved, when I got saved, and can I say, when you got saved... I hope and pray that the minister that you sat under or the pastor that you sat under didn't tell you if you will get saved, all of your problems will be gone. Because if he did that, he lied to you. I believe in my heart that when Jesus comes into our hearts, yes, our problems are still there, but I do know this, that there's nothing that we go through that God will not get us through. I believe the old saying that God, if he takes you to the storm, he will get you through the storm. I understand that a lot of people want to take the easy way out. And most people want to go around the storm. But can I tell you, I don't want to go around the storm by myself. I would be, rather be in the storm with Jesus than go around the storm without Jesus. But how do we make it? Let me, I'm going to give you some advice on how that we make it. And as you stay there in Colossians chapter number 3, I want to read some more scripture to you and I want you to think about this. I believe with all of my heart that you and I, when we give our hearts to Christ, entered a battle. A fight. I believe that every one of us, every day of our lives, we've got to fight for our spiritual lives. I, how do I know that? Well, because we know that the thief cometh not before to kill, steal, and to destroy. But we also know that Jesus said, I have come, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Paul tells us in the book of Ephesians to put on the full armor of God. And if, and if Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God, that means this, that you and I is in a battle. And we must prepare for war. Amen. Do you know the devil's doing everything within his power to kill you, to destroy you, to destroy your marriage, your family, your children, your grandchildren, the church, and everything that is in this world? Because that is what his desire is. He wants control. The Bible teaches us in the book of 1 Timothy, instructions from Paul to Timothy. He says this. Now notice this. He says, fight the good fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. He said, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth. That word quickeneth means to be made alive. All things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. 
So my advice to us tonight is, as a pastor, as a Christian, as a brother in Christ is this. If you're going to make it in this life, you have to fight. Brother Austin, would you come up here? And boy, God is working this out. Had no idea that he would be here tonight dressed the way he is. Brother Austin, I just want you to stand right there and just turn and let everybody see you. Not to bring attention to him, but it's obvious he's either wants to be somebody, wants to draw attention to himself, or he has put himself in a place where he's dressed the way he is. Now, let me just tell you this. He was not forced to dress like this tonight. It's a choice that he made. You want to know why it's a choice that he made? Because one time in his life, he signed up for something. Is that true? Yes, sir. You enlisted. That's right. You went to boot camp. No one forced me to do that. Nobody forced you to do that. You willfully did that on your own. Can I ask you what in the world's wrong with you? That's a good question. Now, Austin, when you did that, did you realize what you were signing up for? He knew exactly why that he enlisted. He knew that he would have to go to boot camp. He knew how many years he would sign. How many years have you signed up for? Uh, so far, 10. So far, 10 years. You ought to give him a round of applause. Hey, he has sacrificed his life, listen to me, for your freedom. People like him is the reason you sit in a place tonight that have freedom and liberty to worship the way that you do. Amen. Thank you, brother, for your service. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. But now, Austin, I want you to understand something. When you signed up for this, you knew what you were getting into, didn't you? Yes, now, when you went to boot camp, what did they prepare you for? War. War. <laughs> Again, I ask you, why would you do that? Think about this. Why would anybody want to sign up for war? Now, would you mind answering that question? Uh, God told me and put it on my heart, and I've felt that way since I was a kid. So God has placed something upon his heart to serve and protect the people of this country. Is that correct? Yes. That's why you've done that. You've enlisted at least 10 years. Now, do you plan on enlisting and going longer? Yes, I plan on retiring at 25. Retiring at 25? Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? Well, I'd like to have retired at 25. Oh, 25 years of service. Okay. Okay. Now, when you look at Austin tonight, if you was to see him out on the street, what would you say he is? Soldier. Now, he's dressed the part. But you see, it's more than dressing the part. He has to prepare for battle. And he did that by going to boot camp. Is that correct? Yes. But now, it doesn't stop there. Once a month, you have to do something. Is that right? Yes. Now, what do you do once a month? Report, uh, and then I do my job, but every job is a big piece of the whole process. It's a re is it a refresher every month? Yep, refresher training uh, and also for additional training if you want to further your job to be better. So do you understand that at any particular time, even though it may not be the weekend that you've signed up for, you may be called to duty? Yes. You understand that? Mm -hmm. That you could be pulled away from your family? Yes. That you could actually lose your life? Yes. That's right. You can be seated. Thank you. Why would you do that? The Christian is the same way. The Bible teaches us in 1 Timothy to fight the good fight. But in 2 Timothy chapter number 2, he all says this, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And you know what that tells me? 
that we, when we enlisted, when you enlisted, when you gave your heart to Jesus Christ, that any preacher, any pastor, that any, any biblical understanding would have told you when you enlisted and when you signed up that the battle is just beginning. Can I tell you as your pastor, as your friend, as your brother in Christ, my friend, you need to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you to fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life because it is a battle. But how do we make it? If you will look tonight at chapter number three, I believe that Paul gives us the answers on how we make it. And the first thing that we see here in chapter number 3, starting at verse 1, he says this. I like the word if. He said, if you be risen, if ye then be risen. You know what, you know what I take that to say? If you really are who you say you are. There was an old saying when I first got saved. Shirts, it was printed on the shirts. and I've heard people say it here. Uh, before, not necessarily here, but in today's day and age. If you're going to talk the talk, walk the walk. Notice what Paul says in verse number one. If, if ye be risen, if you are truly who that you say you are, notice what Paul tells us to do. If you're going to make it, the very first thing you must do is you must seek. But notice what he says. Seek what? Those things which are above. If you are saved tonight, that word seek means this, that you should go and yet you should seek or you should search. Where are we headed? Are you on your way to heaven? Are we just like sitting on a cruise ship just waiting for the Lord to come back? Or are we in the fight of our lives? The Bible teaches us that if we ever are going to make it to heaven, we must endure as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We've got to fight to fight. We've got to lift up our hands. We've got to say, not today, Satan. We've got to say, listen, with God, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. Why? Because we are in a battle. Too many times people are seeking the things of this world. They're, they're seeking fame and they're seeking fortune and they're seeking uh, materialistic goods and they want identity and they want all these things to only to make a name for themselves. Can I tell you on January the 12th, 1993, when I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, I did not make the 10 TV news. But I made news in heaven. Because the Bible says, and the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents. And from that day forward, I did my very best to seek the face of God. And he says, if I be risen with Christ, if we're going to make it, what we need to do is this. Seek those things which are above. Well, preacher, when you say seek those things which are above, what does that mean? I believe it means this. We ought to seek the things that please God. You know, let, let me just help you all to understand what I'm talking about. Sometimes we don't feel like preaching. But God didn't ask me if I felt like preaching to do it. He said to be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering. There's times in my life that I don't feel like coming to church. But listen, God didn't ask me if I felt like coming to church. We ought to be like David. And we should be thankful that we can come to the house of God. Amen. He said, I'd rather be in the house of God and be a keeper of the door than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. We should get that mentality. Why? Because we are in a battle. We are in a war. And can I tell you this? It seems as if the enemy's winning. You know why it seems that way? Because he is, in a sense, 
He's taking those that's not been faithful, those that took their salvation for granted, those that wasn't serious with God, and he has sifted them like wheat. Some has fell upon stony ground, but they couldn't get rooted. Some has fell on a uh, uh, ground where the thorns and the thistles, they, they'll grow up and they'll choke them out. But there's just a few that have fell on good ground. We need to seek those things which are above. What pleases God? Listen, can I ask you tonight? When you are out in this world, when you go to seek things, are you seeking the things that please God or are you seeking the things that please yourself? Remember I told you we're in a battle. It's easy for us to fulfill the lust of our flesh. It's easy to do things that make us feel good. If I don't want to go to church, guess what? I won't go to church. If I don't want to pray, guess what? I find myself not praying. If I don't want to study, guess what? I find myself not studying. If I don't want to sing joys unto the Lord, guess what? I won't sing joys to the Lord. And before you know it, when I stop praying, when I stop reading, when I stop coming to church, when I stop seeking the face of God, I find myself in a place where I don't want to be. You want to know why? Because we're in a battle. The devil will never come to you and make God look good. You take that home with you. The devil will never place something in front of you that will ever make God look good. Oh, he'll portray it to be like God. Because Lucifer, Satan himself, can become an angel of light. And you better make sure that whatever you're into in this life, you better make sure it's of God and not of the enemy. Endure hardness. As a good soldier, lay hold on eternal life. And the way you do that is you fight the good fight of faith. And how you get through that is you seek things which are above. But notice this, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So we see if we're going to make it in this life and we're going to make it of heaven, the first thing that we should do is seek those things which are above. And the second thing comes from verse number two. Not only should we seek those things which are above, but two, we should set our affection on things above. To set your affection simply means this, to set your desires. Hey, can I ask you, what motivates you? What, made it, what motivates you to come to the house of God? Boy, I'm preaching now. Let me, let, me, let me help you to understand something. We can fill up the church house, and you don't want to know how? Get some good singers. You know another way we can fill up the church house? We can have a good dinner. Hey, you want to know what else we can do? Have somebody famous come in. We can get the best preacher. I promise you, if we had some evangelist that is well known throughout the world, can I tell you, this whole church would be filled. They would be standing in the hallway. They'd be gathered on the outside. You would have thought that Jesus showed up. That's why he said in verse number one, he said, seek those things which are above. But in verse 2, he says, set your affections on things above. Let me tell you, if you come to the Centerburg Free Will Baptist Church because of Pastor Mark, you come for the wrong reason. If you come to the Centerburg Free Will Baptist Church because we had a wonderful meatloaf and chicken dinner, even though it was good, you come for the right, wrong reason. If you come and uh, listen to see Brother Michael Ordain and just to support him, can I tell you, even though you came, it was a good idea, but you came for the wrong reason. Because, see, it's not about him. It's not about me. It's not about the chicken. It's not about the meatloaf. It's not about the steak. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, set your affections. Sorry if I spit on you. On things above. I'm excited. But your nana's used to it. That's why they sit in the front row. 
They don't mind getting sprayed with the Holy Ghost here and there. Set your affections. What moves you? What, what is your desires? What makes you get up on Sunday morning? I heard my wife tell someone the other day, when we were a young couple and we had children, one of the worst days of our week was Sunday. I don't remember it. I was just glad to go to the house of God, but I must have been a bear to her. Raising twin boys, I, maybe I didn't help her, I don't know. Or maybe it was Michaela was a brat. We did call her Angelica off of the Rugrats. Amen. Now, I don't know what, we, what happened, but Tricia obviously remembers that. So I would assume I did something wrong for her to remember that. Amen. I got you over there, didn't I? I'll preach over here. You all. But if we're not careful, we can allow the cares of this world, how we feel, what we do, who's going to be there, who's not going. You know what? Sometimes people will decide not to come to the house of God because somebody's not going to be there. And sometimes we will come to the house of God because we know somebody else will be there. But we've missed the most important reason why we should come. It's not necessarily who's going to be there physically in body, but who's going to be there. You know, I, I want to go to heaven. But, but I'm not going to heaven because my daddy's there. But I'm thankful that he's there. And I'm thankful I'm going to get a seam. Hey, listen, I'm not going to heaven because my pup Paul, all the days of his life, before I come to know Jesus Christ, laid out his Bible, began to read and begin to witness to me. Hey, listen, that's not why I'm going to heaven, but I'm glad he's there. I'm going to heaven because I'm setting my affections, my desires on getting there. It's because of Jesus. Hey, listen to me. We can make it. But we've got to endure hardness as a good soldier. We can make it, but we've got to lay hold on eternal life. Hey, we can make it, but we must put on the whole armor of God. Not a half of it, not three quarters of it, not 99% of it, but we must put on all of the armor of God. He said, if you be risen with Christ... This just isn't a suggestion. These are orders from the general. If you be risen with Christ, what does he say? Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And number two, set your affection, set your desires. You know what he was saying? He was saying this, get focused. Mm. My foot's on the rock and my mind's made up. Nothing's going to detour me. There's not a devil in hell, not a person this side of heaven. Listen, as long as I've got the Lord, I'm purposing in my heart. I'm going all the way with him. You see, that's the mindset we need to have. Now, that doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen. That doesn't mean that roadblocks aren't going to come. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to fall. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to fail. As we said last night, it's not how we start. It's not how fast or slow that we run. But the fact of the matter is this, is if we finish. Amen. Paul said, I fought. <laughs> I fought a good fight. I have finished my course I have kept the faith Amen. we can make it Amen. we can make it Amen. we can make it hallelujah Amen. but you got to seek those things are which above you've got to set your affections man you know brother Scott I love my children I'd do anything for my children. I believe that I would actually give my life for my children. 
But I'll tell you what I won't do for my children is go a different direction that they decide to go. Because see, there is a heaven to gain Amen. and a hell to shun. Amen. I made up my mind 28 years ago that I want to go to heaven. And here's the thing, Sister Evelyn, I'm not there yet. But I've got to keep fighting. I've got to keep running. I've got to keep striving. I've got to keep enduring. Why? Because that's what the Word of God says. Amen. If you're going to make it, you've got to seek if you're going to make it you've got to sit and lastly this sometimes is the most challenging the third part is after you seek after you set listen to me then you have to destroy what do you mean you got to destroy hey you got to fight right you're a soldier Austin enlisted in the army. Is that right? You know what he said? He's been in there 10 years, or you've enlisted for 10. But once to go 25 years, he's not there yet. But he's got to continue. Is that correct? And God forbid... That Austin will ever have to leave his family and go to a place where he has to physically fight. I pray that you never have to do that, brother. I pray that you never have to leave your son, your sons and your wife and your family and go fight for us so we can be free. Because listen to me, friend. When you decide to go and when they call you to go to another country to fight, listen, can I tell you, the fight is on. And he'll have to do anything he can to make sure that he makes it home. And you know what that means? There'll be things he'll have to destroy. Mm, you just didn't get it. Notice with me, in verse number 3, he says, For ye are dead. Now, what are we dead to? We are dead to sin, right? Because we have been risen with Christ. He says, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. But notice this in verse 4. When Christ who is our what? Life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him. Where at? In glory. But we're not there yet, right? But notice verse 5. Mortify. Mortify, therefore, your members. You know what that means? You've got to destroy. You've got to kill. Oh, you see, this is the part that nobody wants to hear. We want to get saved. We want to believe that we're going to heaven. We want to set our affections on above. We want to seek those things are above. But when it comes to destroying things that will harm us, we don't want to do it. Let me tell you something, friend. If you're in war physically and someone pulls a gun on you, as much as you do not want to shoot them and kill them, I promise you, you'll do that. You have to destroy what's wanting to destroy you. Hey, let me remind you, the devil wants to destroy you. He wants you to get your eyes off of God and onto your problems. Off of God and the things that will satisfy you. Off of God and onto the things of this world. So it's easy for us to seek or to go and search for those things which are above. Because it feels good being a Christian, doesn't it? Hold on. It, it, it feels good when, when the Spirit of God moves, doesn't it? And you feel God's presence. But can I tell you, it doesn't always feel good. There's times that we feel uh, dread to come to the house of God. We, we feel uh, like we're not worthy to come to the house of God. We feel bad because there's sin in our lives. And therefore we don't want to come. It's the battle that we're faced with. But he said, seek. 
Seek those things which are above. Then set your affection. And then in verse 5 he says, mortify. That word mortify means to destroy or to die out to. Let me tell you something. You were conceived in sin. You live in a world of sin. Your carnal nature is to sin. It is to go against God. Because, see, that's, it started back in the garden. And because of that, you and I have to go through this process. We were born into this life. I know we didn't have a choice to be born here, but we were born here. But we do have a choice on where we'll go. And he says, if we want to go, you got to set your affections. Is that what he said? He says, you got to be or seek those things which are above. You've got to set your affections. And thirdly, you've got to destroy. Mortify, therefore, your members. What is that? Which are upon the earth. The first one he deals with is this, fornication. Uncleanliness. Things that are unclean in the eyes of God. Inordinate affection, evil conspicuous, and covetous, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Can I tell you we can make it? Hey, do you all believe we can make it? Amen. Hey, let me ask you, let me ask you, how many of you want to make it? I want to make it. I, listen, I don't want to get to the end of the race only to fall over and not make it. Hey, hey can I, let me ask you something. If you should see me on the way of life and I get down through years and listen to me, I'm about to cross over and I've laid down the cross and I've given up. Can I ask you something, friend? Would you do me a favor? Would you come to me? Would you incur me to get back up and go, listen, endure to the end? Because if I will endure to the end, I'll be saved. Hallelujah. And I might just make it with your help. If you see me doing things that's unbiblical, unethical, or, or immoral, or ungodly, would you come to me? You see, you think you might be hurting me, but really you'll be helping me. Because you'll be showing me what God's way is. It's fighting the good fight of faith. Mortify, therefore, your members. Destroy. Can I ask you something tonight? My voice is about gone. In all seriousness, only you know this. I, I know what I struggle with. And listen to me. If the preacher struggles, not meaning that I'm anything above anybody else, but can I tell you, you struggle. If Adam and Eve struggled, you struggle. If David struggled, you struggle. If Abraham struggled, you struggle. If Moses struggled, can I tell you, you struggle. The only one, listen, if Jesus struggled, preacher Jesus didn't struggle, really. Why would he go to the garden and say, oh God, Oh, God, I'm begging you, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to go through it, God. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Set your affections tonight, church, on things above. Oh, Oh, if we ever get a hold of anything, we need to get a hold of this church. We can make it. And the only way we're going to make it is if we seek those things above. And we set our affections on things above. And we destroy the things which hinder our walk with God. Preacher, what is that? Hey. It's as simple as a thought that could hinder our walk. 
We think it's cute. Listen to me. When our kids make up stories when they're little. We think it's cute when they tell a little white lie. Don't we? But what we don't realize is how it's hindering them. We make up things to satisfy them. We make up things to satisfy ourselves. We give our children access to anything in the world just so it'll keep them quiet. <laughs> My wife was so under conviction when she became pregnant with Michaela. She didn't want to go back to work. And you know, we had purposed in our hearts that we didn't want anybody else to raise our children. Now, now listen to me. I, I'm not sitting up here telling you what's right or wrong or indifferent. I'm telling you our convictions. I remember when Michaela was born, Trisha struggled going back to work. She didn't want to go. But man, we found the best babysitter this side of heaven. The best babysitter, the closest to God that we could ever get. Didn't we? Mama Dolly. My aunt. And I said, you know what? Not taking anything away from my mom or her mom, or her, but she was willing. And you know, we were willing to give her to her for a few hours. You want to know why? Because we knew what she believed. We knew what she would teach her. Then the boys come. I wanted three children. Trisha said two. She says, I'm getting pregnant twice. I've settled it and you can't do nothing about it. I said, God can. She got pregnant twice. We had three children. Hey, you tell me God doesn't give us all what we want. Now, had, he, had I known that I would get twin boys out of prayer, I said, oh, no, God, two's enough. But God knew what he was doing. But I remember when the time came for her to go back to work, she says, Mark, I'm not going. I said, I agree. Stay home. She says, I'm going in. Now, this is before that the boys came. She was pregnant. She was six, seven months pregnant. She knew she was going to go on maternity leave. She says, I'm going in, and I'm telling them I'm not coming af back after I had the kids. I said, that's great. You do that. She went in. She says, look, we've prayed about this. We don't want anybody else raising our children. I'm not coming back to work. Guess what they said? Because, I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, because we set our affections on things above. Because we purposed in our heart what was best for our family. They said, well, would you do this? Would you consider working from home? Yuns didn't get that. She went in to quit. But then they asked her, would you consider working from home so you could be with your boys but yet still work for us? I'm going to go ahead and shout since you all won't. God has a way. When there is no way, God makes a way. Why? Because you set your affections. You seek the face of God. You set your affections and you destroy the things that will hinder your life. Now, that doesn't mean we've been perfect parents. That doesn't mean our children are perfect. My kids have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of work to do. But can I say this? We can make it. We can make it. We can make it. Hey, we can make it. We can make it. I'm telling you, with God's help, we can make it. And I'm going to tell you how we make it as you stand tonight. If you be risen with Christ, listen to me. If you be risen with Christ, this is how you make it. Seek those things which are above. Set your affection on things above and destroy Mortify the things in your body that can hinder your walk with Christ. I, I don't want any music playing tonight. 
I don't want Kennedy singing. I don't want her playing. Because I want every one of us tonight to ask God to examine us. God, is there something in my life? God, have I stopped seeking the things above? God, have I...